maybe we should start off with what you're, you're discussing right now, which is the issue around uh, treatment as prevention. You, you always have to consider the cost in relation to the possible payoff. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we step back a little bit and look at the development of antiretroviral therapy, of course, the cheaper it gets and the best, better tolerated it gets, mm -hmm. uh, the more uh, people you can treat. Mm -hmm. And that's the movement we see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, costs have dropped enormously. Uh, of course, uh, I'm talking here about, uh, about developing countries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the <coughs> treatments get, uh, are, are more efficacious, better tolerated. Mm -hmm. So now the treatment as prevention thing, of course, we, we were very involved in that because there was this Swiss statement uh, mm -hmm. which uh, said that people who are treated and have undetectable viral load are not uh, infectious or very little infectious. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, one of the main reasons why uh, we, we made that statement was uh, to push this idea of treatment as prevention. Mm -hmm. Because the situation with prevention is that we are back to square one, meaning condoms behavioral change because the hopes in vaccines and microbicides are uh, by and large uh, dashed. We have to do without for the next uh, uh, few years at least. And therefore, we need all the help we can get in prevention and treatment by diminishing viral load and diminishing infectiousness is a potential weapon in preventing disease. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, we, we started uh, uh, talking about costs, um, of course, it will cost a lot of money to treat more people, but if you figure in the in infections prevented in the future and the savings from not having to treat these infections in the future, then the cost-benefit analysis is actually quite favorable, mm -hmm. as for instance, uh, uh, people like Julio Montaner and the World Health Organization, uh, Williams et al. have shown uh, in several publications during the last year. So this idea really has caught on, and I'm, I'm happy about that. How do we train and educate a public that wants this one single message that, that says, yeah, this is really effective, and that's all I need, uh, as opposed to also using condoms? Well, it's, it, it's difficult. I think that uh, one longs for a simple message, but if this mm -hmm. simple message is uh, in part or totally wrong, then mm -hmm. you don't have a good public health uh, policy. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the complexity of it, as, as, you uh, as you just explained, I mean, on the, on the one hand, on the population level, there is mm -hmm. certainly an excellent protective effect of treatment, probably mm -hmm. much better than condoms. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And then on the individual levels, can you assure somebody that there is absolutely no risk? And you probably mm -hmm. cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And th we, you, you have to live with this d d dichotomy. Uh, what one shouldn't do is to take one for the other, meaning that if you cannot assure uh, of zero risk, that you have to pretend that there is a maximum risk and, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. That, mm -hmm. that would be a mistake. Many people are making mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They say, uh, you know, you cannot measure a danger. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that is, is menacing. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot measure a danger because it's so small that it is unmeasurable, mm -hmm. that is a message which is re rather, uh, rather reassuring. Mm -hmm. And the two things in the public mind are always uh, often getting confused. And actually, the, uh, the fact of what to do about small risks is uh, among the most controversial issues in politics. Mm -hmm. You know, a mad cow disease, a bird flu, mm -hmm. uh, uh, nuclear power plants, uh, you know, this, this sort of thing excites a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there are whole political movements uh, around managing those risks. So I, I think we shouldn't be surprised that this discussion continues and welcome it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, from a public health standpoint, what you need to do is to eliminate the essential risks, those mm -hmm. risks which uh, drive an epidemic. And, uh, if you, uh, and, and that is your task. It, it is not mm -hmm. really to uh, micromanage individual behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the sort of the, mm -hmm. the, the path that I think we should take. Mm -hmm. Because there are very practical and very real, uh, min all but far, uh, sub substantially minimal risks. But you, so you just have to say that, that these are, uh, it's a compendium of, of care or treatments that are offered. Uh, so uh, what about the, 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 the money when we're talking about if we do scale up? Mm -hmm. Let's just suppose right. we're in the future and we've scaled up. It, can we negotiate? I mean, here we've lost Martin Delaney, who is mm -hmm. one of the key negotiators of price mm -hmm. with pharmaceutical companies and from a very practical and very real pragmatic standpoint um, that maybe could put a lot into this. But I see a possibility that if we say to the pharmaceutical companies that, yeah, we're going to use to buy the gels, we're going to give them out liberally, mm -hmm. we're going to use condoms, we're going to have people treated very early, 
tested, treated, mm -hmm. tested, treated, automatically. We kill this, this virus and nip it in the bud. There are all these issues, and uh, I think it'll be an enormous challenge to uh, take treatment and use it as prevention to stamp out the epidemic, because in contrast to uh, smallpox and all that, uh, the, uh, the success depends on the disappearance mm -hmm. of the infected mm -hmm. uh, persons through mm -hmm. a natural attrition, meaning the mm -hmm. natural mortality, mm -hmm. and that will take generations. Yeah. So it's an yeah. enormous undertaking. I think uh, we, we, we can envisage it. We do not really understand yet the, the, the costs uh, benefits uh, analysis. For instance, uh, the, the, the drug costs are, of course, what comes to mind first. But of course, there is all the, the delivery, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the necessary laboratory Testing, surveillance yeah. and, and all that. And then uh, there is the question of the political will, the leadership. We, if we are mm -hmm. talking about generations, uh, you know, the effort needs to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, of course, it will have to be borne finally by the, uh, by, by the most involved countries themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we will need eventually, provided that pilot uh, studies show that this is an efficacious approach, is, uh, is, is, is political leadership uh, from mm -hmm. the countries uh, mm -hmm. that are involved themselves who mm -hmm. take that on as a, as a mission, as a necessity, mm -hmm. like, like, like would be, for instance, a war or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that this will will be consistent and, and durable for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. And that all is all there are question marks around all that, mm -hmm. but it's not a reason not to start. And I think um, this idea has caught on uh, um, very strongly, like a wildfire, that uh, the impression you have when you talk about it is really like you put the match to a can of, of, of gasoline. gasoline yeah. and, and, and that's that's one of the big things at this conference. Mm -hmm. And it actually began, I, I, I know that you were on the, the came in late to that, that press conference, mm -hmm. but uh, nevertheless can make your mm -hmm. contribution uh, where there was talking. And one of the questions I asked was, do we have the information necessary <coughs> to sub support the concept. And I, I think that they were like waffling a little bit because mm -hmm. maybe they didn't have all the data. What would it cost to roll uh -huh. something like this out right. in an enormous way? Well, what we have is some theoretical calculations. Mm -hmm. I don't think they, well, they are useful to tell people that this is possible, but are they realistic? You can mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. if you juggle the numbers, Because there is a human aspect. I of mean, course. people have to do, of, of do something. They have to do yeah. it, and I'm talking about the political will, the acceptance of large-scale screening, the presence of, um, of, of, um, uh, of, of stigma or fears of mm -hmm. screening, mm -hmm. the effects of the drug. Will the people continue to take the drug if it's not primarily for themselves, but to, to, to make them less? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, th these are big questions, and you cannot put them into equations. Mm -hmm. But uh, what these first publications show is that there is a way forward that uh, in, in given certain assumptions that this mi approach might work. Now the hard work will start mm -hmm. and the, 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 the trials will have to be done and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see at future conference, I think we'll mm -hmm. see the results of, of, of these uh, efforts.